Hi, my name is Tim Sasserchi. I'm product manager of AS Interface at Pepperland Fuchs. And today I'm going to show you how to get advanced diagnostics from the Ethernet IP gateway in the RS Logics 5000 software. If you recall, I've already configured and completely programmed the gateway into the PLC. I've completely set up my network. Everything's good to go. Now I just want to get a little extra diagnostics out of it. Okay, with this demo, I'm going to show you how to do some advanced diagnostics with the AS interface using the RS Logix 5000 software connected to an Ethernet IP gateway. You can also do the same diagnostics through a device net gateway or through the backplane cards of the control Logix or compact Logix. Uh, let's talk about a few prerequisites that you want to have going before you do this demo. Number one, your AS interface gateway should be running. If you double click on it, the SATA should be running. You should be using a assembly instance that maps the long mailbox. You can check this by checking for the assembly instance that you're using. So in this case, I'm using assembly instance 135.171 and you can see that it maps a long mailbox. You can also check in the controller tags. You want to make sure that you downloaded the CSV file for that assembly instance so that all of your descriptions are in there. Okay, you can see now I have descriptions for where my digital in and out, my analog start, and also it'll say large mailbox one command start. Okay, so if that's in there that you know that the long mailbox is also mapped. This mailbox allows you to retrieve and send information that's not normally directly mapped in the I.O. table. So this could be advanced diagnostics like error counters, your a list of detected slaves. This could be extra analog information that's not analog 29, 30, 31. You could turn the push buttons off on the, on the, on the front panel of the gateway if you want. So there's lots of things you can do. So let's get started. The other thing you want to do is uh, go to the website and download the add-on instructions. We're going to be using these to retrieve diagnostics through the mailbox. You may have already done this, just in case you haven't, I'll show you. Go to just type in the gateway number, vpg-enx-k30. I'm using the one with built-in safety monitor. If you want to do that. Okay, here it is. Once that comes up, click on it. And just scroll all the way down to the bottom. It says, under software tools, example projects, and add-on instructions for Allen Bradley PLCs. You can see I downloaded it to my desktop and there's a bunch of folders in there. One of the folders says add on instructions. So we're going to do that. All right, let's go back to our project. You can see that on starting up, gateway is running and I have no ladder logic and it's just an empty wrong. So the first thing I want to do is put my add on instructions in. So I want to go add on instructions, right click, choose import. and I want to go to that folder which is on my desktop. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of these. There's more if you need them, um, if you're using some of the older products, but I'm going to show you a Get Diagnostics and import that one. I'm going to ask you to create one, just choose OK. Let's import another one. I'm going to show you also the Get Diagnostics Advanced. This can only be used with the Ethernet IP and device net gateways. It won't work with the backplane AS interface cards, just because there's some extra functions in there which are not available in those. import. The next one I want to import is the diagnostic retrieval for the safety monitor. That one's called PF16 Channel Safety Diagnostics. And the last one I want to import is just for analog data. If, for example, you have analog slaves at uh, 
an address other than 29, 30, and 31, and they're not directly mapped, this might be something that you want to use. So I'm going to use the the read for analog in, set for analog out. This will read the analog data from four consecutive slaves starting at any address you wish, just as long as it's not the ones that are already already mapped. Okay, so we got that done. All of those add-on instructions are in here. Now, what we want to do is go to our controller tags, and we need to create two new variables for my add-on instructions. And I want to put the mailbox in its own integer array. So I'm going to call them mailbox in. This is going to be of size integer 18. Even though the new mailboxes are actually 19 integers long, that last integer is not required for this demo. So you want to only use 18. So int 18. So I created two new ones. One's called mailbox in. It's 18 integers long. It's an array. The other one's called mailbox out. 18 integers long. You can create that in controller or program text. Doesn't matter. So now I want to go to my first rung and set up my there's a move instruction required to move the mailbox data to these new variables. So I'm going to create two copies. Okay, my source is going to be my input data, gateway one input. And what you want to do is just scroll down to where the mailbox starts. Right here. Okay. So I'm moving the input data to my new mailbox input the first location, and of course the size is 18. In the output you're really doing the reverse, so you're moving the mailbox out, the first location of the array, to your output data, which is directly mapped. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down in the gateway one, that's my Aussie gateway. Just keep scrolling down until you get to mailbox one start. Okay, and length is 18. So that's all we have to do there. So I can assemble these edits. So now all my mailbox data has been moved to my new mailboxes. One's called mailbox in, one's called mailbox out. So now let's get started on adding the mailbox instructions. So the first one I want to do is some advanced diagnostics. I need a trigger bit to turn these mailbox instructions on. Okay, so I'm going to call it trigger. You just type in a name and you right click on it and choose new trigger it'll assign it let's say data type boolean and we can just do create and then that's all ready for you and the first add-on that we want to do is if you go up to add-on tab all of those add-on instructions are now imported and ready to use you can just hover over them and they'll pop up and I am going to do get diagnostics advanced Okay, so I can call this FB1. Okay, this is just the name of the function block. You need to create that for everyone, and they all have to be unique. So you just create FB1. Again, right click, put new FB1. It automatically will make it of type data type get diagnostics advanced, which is exactly the name of the add on instruction. That's fine. And there's a couple of variables that you need to add in here. One's called mailbox in, one called mailbox out. These are the reason that we created those mailboxes to begin with. Okay, so this is the same mailbox right here. So we just double click on there. Mailbox in. We just choose a whole mailbox. We don't need to point to the first element. Again, mailbox out. Okay, now this advanced diagnostics instruction also has a place where it can put error counters. So when you read the advanced diagnostics, you can show error counters for every slave on the network. So I'm going to just rename it basically the same as I have here, error count net one, because this is for the first network. Error count net two. And again, I will right click new error count it makes it a short integer array 32 long basically each slave or each node gets one byte of that array that's why it's 32 long okay so I created both those elements and um, now I'm just going to assemble 
it is um, for network one. Zero or one is basically the same thing. And uh, byte swap is always zero. Byte swap of one or turning byte swapping on would only be used for the RS Logics uh, 5000 if you're using the backplane cards. Okay, for the gateways, it's always at zero. Now let's trigger this. Okay, when you trigger the instruction, you get an enable and you get a done. Then you know the instruction is finished. If you also get no error bit on, then you know it's been successful. You can also verify this by the status. It must be zero. Okay, and now you can look at what the diagnostics data that we retrieved. There are no peripheral faults. It's okay because that's on. Automatic addressing is enabled and possible. Normal mode active, data exchange is active, configuration is okay, there are no errors. Okay, you can also see that it'll give you a bit for each of these slave lists. The list of activated slaves, list of detected slaves, and so on. You can see by each bit what address is available. Bit 0, of course, address 0 couldn't be activated, but address 1 and address 2 are on the network. So both activated. Address 31 is also on there. And address 27. Okay. Also, this is for the B's. You can see also one B is on there. Okay, but no others. You can see address 10 is also on it. That's our safety node. Okay, you can see that for all these saved lists. Error counters. These error counters will clear every time you activate the instruction. Okay. So that means once you retrieve this diagnostic information, you want to use it. And the next time you retrieve it, we'll give you the error counters and some of these uh, error information from the past time that you retrieve the diagnostics. So for example, if I want to get new information, this is not updated automatically. You need to toggle the bit. It'll go low. And then for example, if I take one node off the network, Okay, so I take one off node off the network, and you notice here that that address one is missing now. That uh, now automatic addressing is active, and it wasn't before, so because one node has failed. List of detected slaves that one is missing, but if you go down here to list of projected slaves, what is supposed to be there, you can see the address 1 there. So you get a lot of extra information, a lot of extra diagnostics. If we look in our error counters number 1, we'll double click on controller tags, go to monitor tags, and you'll see that address 1 has three retries. That's exactly how many retries that you would expect to get when you get the diagnostic information when one missing slave is found. Okay, so let's add another one. Add rung. We'll call it trigger 2. And let's do a safety one. Okay, so I'm going to call it FB2. Doesn't matter what the name is. Right click, new FB2, it's of type 16 channel safety diagnostics. Safety monitor address is zero because it's internal. The mailbox in and out are the same, so I'm just going to drag it down here. Okay. And then also the safety indexes, I need to create this array down here. This gives you diagnostics data of every safety device in your safety program. I'm going to show you that in a second, but I'll do I'll call, just call it index colors. Right click, new index colors. You can just you have to change the array length to accommodate how many devices you believe you're going to have. So I'm just going to create 250. You can't have any more than 256. Uh, in this case, I really only get 3 back. So I filled in everything here. And again, it's uh, network 1, byte swap 0, history 0. You only want history is of 1, 2, and so on if you want to see diagnostics in the past, not the current set of diagnostics. Oh, you can see I forgot to create trigger 2. 
So I'm going to right click, new trigger two of create boolean, and create. Let's try it again. All right. So what I did was, here's my basic safety program. It's the simplest that you can create. I want e stop. Create started automatically on OSSD1. If you look close, you can see the safety index is 0, 1, 2. And if you also, if you go to if if you go to device index assignment, you can see in list here, in list form, what the safety index numbers are, and then the three devices. So let's go ahead and activate this instruction. Okay, so I get three indexes back. See OSSD1 is running. It's, uh, happy. I'm going to go ahead and press the e stop now. First, I want to toggle the bit, turn that instruction off, press the e stop, trigger it back on. Okay, so you can see now my OSSD is off because I pressed the e stop, so it's four. That means it's red. And let's look at the um, index colors. Okay, so we can see here the index colors, they're all four, which refers to a red color. And if we go into our safety program, we go into diagnostics, we'll see that indeed they're all red. Okay, e stops red, start needs to be red because it hasn't turned on yet, and uh, also the output is red. Okay, the last one I want to do is just a, a generic one, or one for uh, analog. So I'm going to add a rung. I'm going to call it trigger 3. You have to remember that only one instruction can be, a instruction can be used at a time. If you want to use multiple ones, you can just toggle back and forth between them. Again, I'm going to use trigger 3, put new trigger 3, type boolean. Go up to my add-on instructions. This time I'm going to use the read for analog in, set for analog out. FB3. Oops. New FB3 is fine. Address 1. First address I want to get the analog data from. Let's assume it's address 1. I don't really have any more right now, but we can demonstrate this. And then mailbox in, mailbox out. This is exactly the same as I've used in the past. And then we want to see where I'm going to put the analog input data and where I'm going to take the analog output data from. So I'm going to put analog out, analog in, analog in. Do that first. It's of type integer 16 as you're talking about four addresses, four integers each, that equals a total of 16. New in, log out, create. That's it. Let's assemble those wrong edits and do a toggle. Okay. Enable, done, no error, status zero. Now if we go to controller tags, you go to analog in. It basically has the default. So there's no analog there, but the default is 32,767. And all of these analog output data, which are all zeros, like a 0 to 10 volt, would be also sent to those analog output data. It assumes that the all the analog data, it could be a mix of analog in and, an, and analog out, will start at address 1 and will be addresses 1, 2, 3, and 4. And that's it. Uh, thank you for watching this video about AS Interface. Please see our YouTube channel for more information.